Welcome to the football show on PLZ Soccer, sponsored by Arnold Clark. It's Tuesday. I'm Peter Martin, delighted to have your company. Alan Ruff is alongside me as ever as my able partner, and I'm delighted to say back with us this week, Alison McConnell of the Evening Times and Herald, here to talk football, and this is what we'll be discussing. Yes, never a dull moment in Scottish football. <clears throat> we will be discussing the uh, Alex McLeish squad and we'll also look ahead to Champions League football and Europa League football involving Celtic and Rangers. Well, today at Hamden, Alex McLeish announced his squad. Our reporter Gabriel Antoniazzi caught up with him. The Scotland squad to play the concluding two Nations League matches away to Albania and Israel at Hamden was announced today. Sunderland keeper John McLaughlin has been recalled. Scotland look a little short at centre-back with John Souter injured and veteran Charlie Mulgrew will face a late fitness test. This could mean that Scotland line up with McKenna and Devlin, Aberdeen's centre-half partnership, starting next week. The inform Ryan Christie and Gary Mackay Stephen retain their places as exciting attacking options and the fit again Ryan Fraser will be a boost for Alex McLeish. However, up front, McLeish has no Griffiths or Naismith, his two first choice number nines. Stephen Fletcher and Matt Phillips have been recalled. McLeish said he had no hesitation to bring Fletcher back. Yeah, I spoke to him this morning and um, he was keen to join up. So it's, he's in good form. He's been out for a long time. We were pretty conscious that he, he possibly uh, felt he needed, to, well, we felt he needed to get more games under his belt at the start of the season. And he's done that. And when uh, we had the you know, the call-offs with no hesitation to call Stephen and, and here he is, so it's great, good news. The inclusion of Callum Patterson is interesting, with McLeish hinting he can be used in several different positions across the park. Whoever McLeish does play, earning six points in the games is the most important thing. Yep, uh, we will hear more from Alex McLeish, but let's get your thoughts first of all. Uh, Ruffy, Darren Fletcher. Yeah, Stephen Fletcher. Stephen Fletcher, yep, you <laughs> took me surprise. Yeah. <laughs> me too. Yeah, thought he's getting a, uh, he's, he's getting <laughs> a call back as yeah. well. Um, uh, it's not too late, by the way. No, Don't rule it out. No, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, the way players pick up injuries just now, it could, it could happen every chance of it happening. No, I think Alex tried to talk that up as much as possible. Uh, his preference would have been Griffiths and Naismith. There's no doubt about that. He's picked a couple of guys who have been in the Scotland setup. They, they are a bit of quality there. They haven't proved that they are in top form just now. But I've said all along, if we could get a striker in there, they can just link up the play. Because I think the people who will win these games that we're coming up will be the midfield. I think the midfield that we've got are strong. You know, they're scoring goals for their clubs and they should be scoring goals against the likes of Albania and Israel. Yeah, I'm trying to look for positives. We are short. We are desperate. Uh, so, Stephen Fletcher, I can understand why Alex has gone for him. Yeah, I don't think it was a huge surprise when, one, he had hinted at it in the aftermath of the last round of games, and also when, when you see Stephen Naismith go off that off at Murrayfield with the injury and you know that Griffiths is out for, for, the, for how long, we don't know. So, I, I don't think there was a huge surprise about the call-up. However, it really does point to an alarming lack of an out-and-out -out goal scorer. When I, I had a quick look today, and I think Stephen Fletcher scored three goals so far this season. Uh, Ollie McBurney is not a prolific scorer either. So when you when you look at the team, you do have a glance and think, where do the goals come from? I think they might come from midfield. Here's my one shaft of positivity on this one, Ruffy <coughs> and Alison, and you can give me your thoughts on it. At times, I think we've been crying out for a striker who can hold the ball up and bring others into mm -hmm. play. If anything, Stephen Fletcher has more of that quality than a Griffiths or a Naismith did. You know, we've been crying out for goals. We struggle for them. Will Stephen Fletcher score goals? He doesn't 
look as if he, he can score, but he certainly got other aspects that I think the others don't have. Yeah, but I think he's got the ability to go into these two games. I mean, we're not talking about we're playing top, top countries, nations, you know. We're, we've already, already seen Albania, we've saw Israel. And although, obviously, Israel beat us, it, it didn't look fantastically well, you know. And I think at home, we should be capable enough. And, and um, Stephen Fletcher might come up and score a goal. That would be a bonus. But I... I I agree with you. I think midfield. I think if we can get people in the wide areas like Forrest, who's who's now hitting top for them, they're the kind of guys I think will be causing these teams trouble. Yeah. Um, as far as Griffiths is concerned, you know, wild speculation, never too far away from him. Um, what about his international future? Here's Alex McLeish. Again, it's not something that I really want to discuss. You know, when I've got to pay respect to a bunch of guys here who we need to get to really big results for. Suffice to say that I did have contract, contact uh, with Lee and it's ve it was very positive. Okay, very positive, <clears throat> which is fine. You can, have, you can have positive talks. We just don't know whether Lee Griffiths is in the right frame of mind, whether Lee Griffiths has trained properly, whether Lee Griffiths has um, fulfilled all the requirements that Brendan Rodgers has been talking about time and time again. I mean, he, he dodged the question with me mm -hmm. after the semi-final about this recurring theme of a guy who just can't seem to get a whole run of games. Yeah, there, there is something enigmatic about his absence from Lennox Town at the minute. I do think uh, he was ill, he, he was unfit. Uh, and no one really knows where he is in terms of his physical fitness. Uh, I think he's back at Lennox Town, but the, Brendan Rodgers has been very careful not to put a time limit on, on when we can expect him back. He, he's obviously just trying to keep it at, at arm's length. But the irony for me just now is that you have Stephen Naismith out. Lee Griffiths was, was quite clearly irked at the fact he had been uh, leapfrogged by, by, by Stephen Naismith in the pecking order when it came to Scotland and this would have been his chance again to go back and, and prove that, that he was a guy to, to be the number one striker for his country and he, he's missing in action. He's not played since I think that 6-0 game at McDermott Park at the, the very end of September so even when he does come back it, it'll take him a while to, to get up to speed again and then you'll have the break for, for the for in January for the midwinter Break. So you're really looking at them to, to kick on in the, the second half of the season. But, but you're right, there's a bit of mystery over what exactly the injury is or what exactly the, the illness is. And there's no, there, there's no time frame right now on when we can expect to see him back. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to look, Ruffy, at his appearances. <clears throat> I mean, he scored a bar load of goals for Celtic. He could have scored many, many more, uh, I would suggest to you, had he been a regular. But even when he was fit and declared himself fit, he wasn't number one choice yeah. with Brendan Rodgers. It was a case of Celtic fans saying, well, you know, yes, they like him, but Dembele and Eduard were always at that point where they were potentially the preferred duo if they were, they were indeed going to play two up front. Yeah, I think if you ask any <coughs> manager starting for Brendan Rodgers, going down to Gordon Strachan, if they had a preference, you know, to play up front by himself, it wouldn't be Lee Griffiths for whatever reason, you know, and a lot of people would be shouting down, you know, but he scores goals, you know, but these managers see something more that you have to offer than scoring goals. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but uh, that's the way it is. And uh, you, we can see that at Celtic when Dembele and Edouard were there, he was third choice, even though he was scoring 30 goals a season. So I think it's up to the individual himself to prove everybody wrong. But he seems to, when he goes on the part and he seems to score goals, he's always telling everybody I'm number one, yeah. you know, and... It's, that's where you've got to get your head round. It is scoring goals, what it's all about if you're a striker. Yeah, absolutely. Listen, uh, he, he always proves the point when he pops up with one, maybe two free kicks. We could do with him right now, to be honest with you, at international level. Um, what about our expectation in this one? Uh, Alex McLeish, fairly succinct on what Scotland need to do in these two games. Is the minimum requirement for you to be top of that group? Yes, yes. That's that's the minimum minimum requirement. It's something that I believe is that we're capable of, and of course, it's something that's achievable. Okay, got to got to top the group. Is that fair, Ruffy? Well, I, I thought we were just needing a draw and a win somewhere, you know, to to do that, you know. And, and let's be perfectly honest here: we're not playing Germany, Poland, you know, Italy, Belgium. It's Albania and Israel. 
and we should have the, the players capable enough of doing this. I've always said it's a very, very young international team. We've got probably the youngest international team for a long, long time. A lot of them are still cutting their teeth at this level, but let's hope that the ones that come in, we're talking about Mickey Devlin maybe coming in and playing with McKenna, very inexperienced, you no know, back to, but let's hope they can do well. We all want to keep behind them. We all want to keep supporting them. And even if we just struggle to qualify, as long as we qualify, it will bring them on leaps and bounds for the other games. Yeah. The one thing, the major thing, I think, that Alex is fighting against at the moment, which I think after Gordon Strachan, I didn't think he was going to have to fight against this, but apathy has set in. Gordon Strachan had his own a high. Mm -hmm. uh, now it's quickly diminished. I think if Scotland don't top the group that Alec McLeish will be under tremendous pressure. I think his future will really come into question if you don't top the group. I think, what, six defeats uh, in, in eight games, I think 13 goals conceded. It's been an absolutely diabolical run of results. Uh, there's been no spark about the, the national team. There's been no creativity. There's been very little to get genuinely excited about. And I think that's reflected in the apathy. Uh, if you want to have people getting behind the national team, you need to give them something. There needs to be something there. And, and frankly, for the last few months, it, it just hasn't been there. Yeah, I, I was going to go out to a concert tonight, Ruffy, and have a right good laugh, but Ali's put me on a downer. I think I might just stay in. <laughs> just go to bed about half nine. <laughs> What's some 80s Scotland reruns? <laughs> go back to the heyday. I mean, it's, cra it's crazy how we've got to this point with it, isn't it? I mean, I just, I don't know. I, there are young players coming through, Ruffy, but you want them to... It's, it's sometimes the way we play. You know, when Alex had the 2007 squad, there were some good players in there, but again, we were up against countries that could clearly give us a doing, so it was always damage limitation. It was always make us compact and difficult to beat. Right now, against Israel and, and Albania coming up, I thought, I, I hope that we go at them. We should be able to go at them and dictate the game. Well, particularly the Albania game away from home. We saw them at Hamden. They're technically good on the ball, but they don't go and hurt you in the dangerous places. They're not going to score two goals, I would guess. You know, So I think it's up to us to come up with the goals. And the big game will be the Israel game. If we can get some kind of result against Albania, I think the supporters will get behind us. But as Ali says, if we don't beat them at Hamden, you're on a complete downer after that. Yeah. I also think there's an element of frustration at times of not picking players that you think are the best players to go in. James Forrest was left out of a starting lineup on the back of scoring four goals. It's a baffling decision. It's a player who, who not only can score goals, an area that we've already spoken about that's a real problem and has traditionally been a problem for some time now, but he can create goals. He was, he's involved, uh, and he's the architect of so many goals at Celtic score. I think that people get frustrated and irked when, when you see good players left out of the team that are available. Kieran Tierney maybe played, played out of position when, when you can, if you can get him and Andy Robertson playing together and both to their strengths. I think there's an element that where you think there are players there if, if you play them well and play them to, to their strengths, what can you do as a team then? Yeah, I have to say to you, and I don't want to sound like a, an old fuddy-duddy, but Ruffy, this is a recurring theme, not just for Alex McLeish. When you were playing in 1978, I mean, I can remember as a boy thinking, wow, Derek Johnson's the top goal scorer in Scotland. He didn't even, he didn't even get on the pitch. Yeah, well, managers have got to make decisions. They, uh, they, they sit, I don't think they... They choose a team, you know, without putting a lot of thought into it. You know, I think we're all confused with Tierney and Robertson. You know, I, I, I personally don't, I've always said, I don't think Tierney defensively is the strength of his game. You know, if you watch him against Celtic, the damage he causes is in the other half of the park. When he gets around about the 18-yard line, he's firing quality balls in. You're not going to get that if he's playing in a back three, so you're really stifling his game. I just think you let him play where he plays with Celtic, and if you want to play Robertson in front of him, because the two of them will get up and down that channel. Uh, now you've got yeah. Callum back again, he can just slot in. I thought he was impressive against England when he was given his chance down at Wembley. So it's a wee bit more stable now, but obviously I've touched on earlier, the uh, Devlin and McKenna are very inexperienced there at international level, but again, it's Albania and Israel will only be playing one striker up front, so you would have thought we could be able to deal with that. Yeah, you optimistic? Yeah, I am. Yeah, 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 I am. yeah. Just yeah. haven't told your face yet. No, no, yeah. no. I, I, I believe that we'll, we'll win these games. OK, I'm happy with that. Uh, Ali, are you optimistic? Uh, I wouldn't use the word optimistic. No, I, I would expect us 
to prevail in both, but I'm not sure what kind of performance might go with it. OK. Uh, fingers crossed. We wish Alec the very best of luck. Sometimes managers need that wee bit of luck. From the international squad to hooliganism, never too far away from our thoughts over the last couple of weeks. The SBFL set for talks on how to deal with this. Certainly strict liability is not on the agenda. It's a, it's a difficult one, I think. Strict liability is a very unpopular concept amongst clubs, but for me, there's never another viable alternative that's offered. And I think the, the recent instances that we've seen of coin throwing, I think we, there was an incident at Livingston earlier in the season where there was a, a linesman struck with a coin from a section of the Ranger support. You had the incident at Tyne Castle, one at St Mern on Saturday. I'm not sure how you tackle it. I think you have to be heavy. I think punishments have to be heavy for the perpetrators who are caught. I think maybe a life ban from, from football stadia is not unreasonable if you're caught throwing something. But in terms of the clubs taking responsibility, if it comes from their section of the support, I'm not sure where it goes. But I think if you're going to dismiss strict liability, you have to come up with an alternative. What about name and shame? Yep, First yep. of all, um, ban. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a bit of community service around you know, something that the player who's been the victim of this deems fitting of someone who thinks it's okay to throw coins? Yeah, I think it's name and shame. Uh, I think, in, in, in all fairness, I think the police have acted very quickly. I think they've got three of the culprits. I don't think they've got the Neil Lennon one yet. Yeah. But they've, they've moved very quickly, and I think the next thing you'll see is we'll see what is going to happen to them. And I think that's the biggest thing more than anything is what kind of sentence they get or what kind of punishment they get. Because for me, the first one will be the deterrent for everybody else, you know, and, and Fitzpatrick's already come out and said it's a life ban. You know, quite happy with that. And I'm sure the supporters that go along to the games to, to enjoy the game will be happy if somebody gets a life ban because it means the idiots around about them will realise what the punishment's going to be. Yeah, I, I have to say, if you were on social media, you know, in fact, since the real um, groundswell of popularity in social media, it's just given rise to, you know, a, a, a lot of... It's odious, let's be honest. I mean, there, and there people is, who think it's OK to do these things. Absolutely. There, there is an odious element on Twitter and, and in social media. And for me, what's quite interesting about it is that you t it, it's, a, it's a forum that you think might open people's minds to an alternative opinion and offer an, a compelling argument for a different opinion that might not be that of your own. But in instead, what you tend to find is that people all group together and look for other people who reimpose their own stance on things. Like it, it, it becomes very, very polarised in terms of specific <coughs> camps. I also think in it, it, we've got a generation now for whom there are very little consequences of speaking on social media and sometimes speaking quite in a way that you would never speak face to face. Yeah. I, I'm sure every one of us has had a message that say I water them at times, let's put it politely. Yeah. Uh, but there's no consequence for it. You, you tend to just move on from it. And I wonder if there's a link then to antisocial behaviour that you're seeing recently. Uh, funnily enough, all the, the arrests were, were, were guys who were pretty young. I'm sure most of them were all in their early 20s yeah. for the coin thrown instances. And you just wonder about the, the aspect of responsibility. Well, it's funny you saying that because <clears throat> there was a fire alarm at Tyne Castle after the Neil Lennon incident before we got to the press conference and the people coming out singing songs which were unsavoury were all young guys. They were all guys who just thought they could get away with just basically hooliganism, walking out onto the street and then when they approached the police suddenly they would all go quiet again. Um, you know, maybe they think to themselves, it's worth taking the hit, it's worth getting, you know, the charge throwing a coin at somebody. And the other thing I think we've got to be very careful of is the responsibility. I mean, we've had an argument with Gordon Smith on it. Um, I think there's got to be a responsibility on what uh, you deem is acceptable uh, behaviour. You know, we're getting to a point where managers and players might not be able to, you know, uh, interact with the crowd. I don't see any difference. I don't know how Gordon managed to see a difference between Neil Lennon having the banter with the Hearts fans and Chris Boyd's banter with the Aberdeen fans. Um, if Chris Boyd had been belted with coins, you know, he joked this morning in the paper it would have been great if they belted him with pies, which I know you've been belted with a pie <laughs> in an Edinburgh derby, Ruffy. But nevertheless, you know, it's the same thing. You know, yeah. they're having a bit of banter with the fans. Neil Lennon's the same. Neil Lennon didn't suddenly turn around at Tynecastle and start firing abuse. 
No, I think we all can decide on the park uh, when a gesture towards the fans is banter and when it isn't. And I don't think any of the things we've seen with Neil Lennon and, and Chris Boyd has been bad. You know, it shouldn't be enough to set somebody off. And if you're the person that that kind of thing sets you off, then you've got a serious problem with yourself. And that's the kind of people that we don't want at football. I agree. I think you look at it, it's really simple. One's a non-aggressive act and one's an aggressive act. Yeah. It's, it's as black and white as that. Yeah. Um, OK, the other aspect I was going to get your thoughts on, guys, is, of course, uh, coming up Europa League, um, Celtic at home to RB Leipzig. Leipzig reckon over 2,000 fans coming for this one. So clearly, uh, yeah. you know, the away support is going to have, hopefully, an enjoyable time in Glasgow. But Odson Edward convinced that they're going to see a different Celtic. Yeah, I think there was a few. Odson Edward said that. Philip Benkovic said the same too, that it'll be a different Celtic. In fairness, I think there's an argument to be made there that Celtic are very different at Celtic Park than they are on their travels. I didn't think there was a huge amount between them in that first 20 minutes at Leipzig, but then Celtic fell apart as soon as they lost those two cheap goals. However, what you would say is this is a game Celtic need to win. If you're going to have any pretensions at all of making it into the, the knockout phase after Christmas, then this is a game they need to win. I think Leipzig are, are three points better off at the minute. If it comes to the head-to-head, -head, I think they've got a superior goal difference of six. Uh, so Celtic need to go out and, and first and foremost win the game on Thursday night if they're to have any chance. And the one thing that you would say about Celtic Park is that it does respond to a European tie. Yeah, this is the battle really for second place, Ruffy. Yeah, I think it is, you know, and Celtic are quite rightly firing on all cinders at uh, home, domestic football. We've seen it, but this is another level. This is another level playing against a, a quality side. Yep, it's great playing at home with all the support behind you, but they haven't really shown us that kind of domestic form in European football and this is a time to do it. Yeah. One other aspect of this in the Europa League, certainly for Rangers, um, they're top of the group at the moment. Um, I would have said, you know, everybody's going, Barry Ferguson was talking about Russia as a difficult place to go. This is a Spartak Moscow side that just seemed to be in complete disarray. So uh, if ever Rangers could, I mean, I, I think a, a point you'd be singing and dancing all the way back from Moscow. I think if you take anything from that game at all, and especially the position that they are in currently, I think if you take a point, it almost takes them through. You would almost think that that would be sufficient to take them into the, the knockout stages. Yeah, I've got a good feeling about it. Yeah, well, they're doing what Celtic aren't doing away from home in Europe. They're managing to get a point here and there, and uh, I think that's all they need. And I think, obviously, if you look at their domestic form, it's not as good as Celtic's. Obviously, the Kilmarnock game and leaving it late at the weekend there, so... They seem to have something in Europe away from home and they'll be hoping they can continue to do that. Yeah, I'll try and sneak this bit in, uh, Ruffy. Not that it really concerns you at the moment because you're at the opposite end of the championship yeah. with Partick Thistle, but um, I, I think well done to Ross County, Stuart Kettlewell, um, with Steve Ferguson, Manager of the Month, and Billy Mackay, Player of the Month. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, very impressed with them when they came to play us. They looked really, or they looked like a Premier outfit. They've yeah. kept most of the Premier League players and they're firing on all cylinders. OK, any signs of revival for you guys? Uh, hopefully in the weekend, yeah, we're playing against Robbo. Uh, they've drawn the last, what was it, five or six, so yeah. let's hope we can stop that run. Such a difficult thing for me to call, you know, my best pal Robbo, or you, my best pal here on the telly, it's so difficult, Ruffy. <laughs> I just don't want you to go on a complete downer. Uh, anyway, Ruffy, can you do me one favour? Can you show me your... Um, your uh, uh, Poppy, it just oh, fell sorry, off there. Yeah, it's yeah. just fallen off. Just in just case, in I case just, I'm yeah. reacting to social well, media. No, I don't want I'll you do. to get pelters off well, me. Well, what I'll do is I'll put two on. <laughs> Just to cover so, for the There you are, Robbie. Oh, safe ride away. Cover all and by the way, I just thought I'd say guilt by association. That's all I'm saying to you. Uh, thanks to Alison McConnell coming on here from the Evening Times and Herald once again. And of course to Ruffy. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can get news updates for Scottish football, English football, and world football uh, on our Facebook and YouTube channels as well. Thanks for watching.